x to the second power. Hold minus on, four. man. Oh, oh, there's a two there. Minus, you said four? Four, yeah. Over. Over x to the second power minus 2x minus 3. Yep. That, that, that's, that's, that, that, that 4 looks like a, a square root. Leave my 4 alone. It looks like a square root. You might want to fix it. Do you think I have any idea how to do that? Meanwhile, in the bathroom! Wait a second. I sense math! It's time for... It's time for... Math Man! I am here. I still don't understand how to do this. Do you do you have any clue? I don't know. It's like a, a fraction inside of a function. It's like I'm trying to solve NASA's flight code for Mars or something. Did I hear graphing? Come here, young lad. Cheese and crackers, it's Math Man! Right you are, young lad. Now I hear you have a problem with math. Is this the problem you're having trouble with, sir? Yeah. Well, I can help you out indeed. This is a rational function. x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now, we have to find a lot of things in order to graph this function properly. Are you willing to go on the adventure with me, sir? All right. So the first thing we have to find is the vertical asymptote. Now, we can find that by first factoring the function. Are you ready, folks? Are you ready, kid? I love your enthusiasm. OK, so up here is a perfect square. So we can turn that into x plus 2 times x minus 2. All right, there we go, hooray! And then we got to factor the denominator. So what multiplies negative 3 and adds up to negative 2? Negative 3 and positive 1. All right, I like the way you think. So x minus 3 times x plus 1 are the factors. Hooray, hurrah, we have factored the function. Claps all around. You did well, my dear. So now all we have to do is set these two equal to 0. x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. One. Now, there's something you've got to be careful of. Holes. Now, holes are one that's a factor in the numerator and a factor in the denominator. As they are the same two factors, then they cancel out and are a whole. But we don't have that here. Hooray for Math Man! So, next up, we have to find the horizontal asymptote. Now, this is a y value that the graph cannot touch, cannot equal out. Although, you'll see in a bit, it has its little exceptions. So, to find that, we look at the degrees of the numerator and of the denominator. In this case, they are the same. So when that's the case, we take the coefficient of both two and we divide them by each other and we get one. So y equals one. All right, so the horizontal asymptote is at y equals one, which means at y equals one, the graph cannot touch it. But I lied. <laughs> the graph can, may cross the horizontal asymptote. We can find out by setting the graph equal to one. Magic marker, come back to me. One equals x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. All right, so this thing is getting a little tricky, a little dirty, a little heated. Be prepared, young lad. So, since it's a fraction, we can also do this with a fraction by putting it over 1. Now we cross multiply. <laughs> x squared minus 4 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. First thing I do, we consolidate. So, we're gonna take this x squared, subtract it by both sides, and look, you know, they both cancel each other out. So we got negative four over negative two x minus three. Now, to find x, all we're gonna do is add three, which gets negative one equals negative two x. Divide that to that side, and we get x equals one half. This is because a real number, not imaginary, a real number, it crosses. Yes, it does cross at x one half and y one. That's where the graph crosses the horizontal asymptote, and only there that'll come up later. So now we can find the x-intercepts, and do you know how to find that, young lad? Set the equation equal to zero. 
This plan is smart. So, erase this. Make room for more math, more problems. So, zero equals x squared minus four over x squared minus two x minus three. Now, since it's a fraction, the numerator has to equal zero. This can equal whatever it has to be, and the equation will still be zero. Because we both know zero divided by any number equals zero. So, setting this numerator to zero, we can take advantage of the fact that it is a perfect square. So, we get x plus two equals plus or minus two. So, those are our horizontal uh, our x intercepts. Two, zero and negative two, zero. Ta-da! Hooray! We found the x-intercept! We found the zeros! Next up is the y-intercept. Now we have to set the equation. We set the x's equal to zero. Because in a y-intercept, the x value is zero. So, f of zero. Oh no, this marker has failed me. I must move to a red marker. It's getting serious. So, f of zero equals zero squared minus 4, 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3. We get negative 4 over negative 3, which also equals 4 over 3. So the y-intercept is equal to <coughs> 0 4 thirds. Hurrah! Hooray! Now, I hear the questions. What about the slant and the hole? We already said that the hole, we don't have one, since we don't have any repeating factors. So, we put none. We put none. And slants, we don't have any slant asymptotes because we already have a horizontal asymptote. So, again, none. Now, all we have to do is graph our points. Are you ready? We're almost there. Yes. Okay, so first, graph the, the vertical asymptotes at x equals 3. And x equals negative 1. So, now we're going to graph the horizontal asymptote, which is at where? y equals 1. All right. So, now we're going to the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes graphed. All we have to do is graph the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So, 2 equals 0, and negative 2 equals 0. That's a lot to see, so let me just... Yeah. These markers are fair to me. Now, the y intercept. Now, here we're saying four thirds is not an exact point on the graph, but we can estimate the power of estimation. So, four thirds is right above one, 1 1.3, and that would be right over here. There we go. So, our x intercepts and our y intercept graphed, we can now move on to drawing it. Now, all we have to keep in mind is the graph cannot cross these two. It can only cross this line at one half. So right there. All right? That's the only place the graph can cross the horizontal asymptote. So let's first start graphing. Now we know the graph has to be here, so we can start by graphing that. You understand? All right, the graph can't be here because that would violate the vertical line test and therefore wouldn't be a function. But that's not true because this is a function. <laughs> so next up is the graph the middle part. And that can be a little tricky. Now, we see that it has to go through these three points. So this graph will do just nicely. <laughs> yes, don't look at my arrows on the ends of your sections to symbolize that it goes on forever, infinitum. Next up, it's a tricky part. Is the graph here or here? What do you think, young lad? No, you're wrong! Yes, you're right! <laughs> do you know why you're right, sir? Oh, no, yeah. yeah. You're good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. It's, uh, it's we so must remain healthy while we do math at all times. So, we know that it cannot cross x intercept anywhere here, so it has to be up here. Ta da! And we've done it. We have graphed the entire function. Hooray, hurrah! Now, do you understand what to do? Yeah. All right. Now, this is your math problem right here. I believe we've done it. Hooray, hooray for math, man. I must make my exit.
state mathematical kids. I'm so glad Math Guy was, Math Man was here. Hey, hey guys, what did I miss? Hey, no. Ryan. Uh, no. Math Man. Math Man was here? Wait, I miss Math Man? Wait, oh, you know, Math. You know him? Hey, guys, we kind of have a problem. What? Math Man forgot to... Tell us the domain of the function? Oh, shoot, you're right. Um, well, it's easy, right? Because you can't equal here, it can't be there. So it would, and it goes all the way to negative infinity and positive infinity over there. So it would be easy to think it'd be negative infinity to negative 1 union, <clears throat> negative 1 to 3 union, 3 to infinity. It's easy math, guys. Not that hard. How you know I am? Um, I got lucky. <laughs> okay. Stay mathematical, kids.